quantum rust hums out of hyperspace. Korriban, beautiful as ever, had become a beacon of redemption and the banner of peace in the galaxy since the day of embers. So Judah, how many of these ceremonies have you been to? This will be my sixth year. I missed last year's because, well, we were searching the galaxy for masters who could finish your training. Yeah, I remember. I've only seen one from a distance. Still don't really understand what it's all about. It's a long story, but basically there were tons of Sith loyalists, artifacts, and temples scattered around the galaxy. The Day of Embers was the day the Jedi destroyed it all. There were a few who tried to preserve some of the items for historical purposes, but there were no exceptions. The galaxy became clean that day. Sounds like I'm in school again. They land the ship in the spaceport closest to the Jedi Monastery, but that didn't save them from a long trip, for the road to the monastery was trying and narrow. But it was also beautiful. Red plant life sprouted to be consumed by gargantuan beasts. Beasts that would provide meals to entire villages of hard-working folk who built families and lives of their own, tilling the fields for grain and fruit to the day they leave the physical realm and enter the netherworld of the Force. The bodies are consumed by the red soil where the plant life flourishes once more. Korriban was a ravaged world dominated by the dark side. Now there is balance. Now there is light. As Judah Kimono and Rain Jexter approach the monastery, they are slowed by crowds gathering to witness what little they can of the ceremonies. They break through the crowd up to a specific point, a trail marker, leading up to the stairway into the temple grounds. Well, I can't go any further. Good luck, Judah. Luck is bad luck for Jedi, Judah smirked as he continued without his friend. Then may the force be with you, Rain waved. Judah entered the monastery. It smelled the same way it always did. Not necessarily a good or bad odor, but one you couldn't quite identify. Yet it was a smell Judah only encountered inside the white stone walls of the Jedi Monastery. Judah! A voice echoed from nearby. Dato? Judah replied, looking about him for the familiar voice. Appearing from the library entrance was a female Jedi. Twi'lek, like Judah, but from the Agilite genome, and unlike Judah, had managed to complete her training and was knighted six months ago. Dato Daruna, Judah smiled. It's good to see you, friend. An embrace and friendly bow later, Dato offered to join Judah on his walk. I'm surprised you're here. You've got a lot of eyes on you. I know you sense it. I do. I don't blame him. You coming to see the Kyber dance? The Grand Master will be there, so yes. What do you want to see the Grand Master for? Judah was quiet. You're not serious. No one's taking you on yet? None. And you think the Grand Master will? If he doesn't, he'll at least have something useful to say. It's been over a year, Dato. We trained together and we even would have been knighted together if everything didn't fall apart. I know, I understand your pain. Do you? I... No, Judah, not really, but I can see why you're upset. I'm sorry, Dato. It's been a rough year and a half. But you're right. Maybe Master Sedana will have some advice. Inside the Prime Dojo, dozens of Jedi gather around the borders to watch the Jedi Performer as she puts on a masterful display of skill and agility. The choreography was known to everyone as the Kyber Dance, and it had been popular during ceremonies like these even since before the days of the Chosen One. But Judah didn't pay much attention. His eyes were focused on what he really came for. Master Sedana Ricci, who watched from the corner beside a beastly fellow bearded and archaic in appearance. Judah works his way around the room to get closer to Sedana, only to be stopped by a sentry Jedi. Let's refrain from greetings after the ceremonies are completed, my friend. A sigh of irritation. The sentry was right. 
It'll be better to wait till nightfall when Sedona isn't expecting guests. Yes, Master. Judas stepped away, but his gaze was met by the dark and bearded man next to Sedona. He was looking right at him. Judah turned away for a moment and looked again. The man was certainly staring him down as if he knew Judah, but he couldn't have. Judah had never seen anyone quite like him in his entire life. Best ignore him and move on. That night, the final ceremonies were commencing. All the Jedi were gathered just outside the monastery. Crowds of citizens watched from afar, eagerly anticipating what was about to happen. Master Sedona captured the attention of everyone, beckoning them to crowd closer. Masters, knights, apprentices, and saplings, thank you for coming to celebrate with us this fateful day. Some of you are here for the first time, and to you I welcome you. It is the 520th year celebrating the Day of Embers. It was a far different time for the Jedi, for the Force even. It was a day so important to the galaxy that no Jedi could escape its incredible signs, even if they wanted to. See, on this fateful day, the Jedi set out on an incredible crusade to rid the galaxy of the evil that was the Sith. It was a difficult time for the Jedi. Never had they been so cunning, so driven, so brutal. But they succeeded. On that day, the Jedi Crusaders gathered up every holocron, every scroll, every tapestry, relic, jewelry, and clothing that had been marked by the Sith. And they burned them. On that day, as the purifying fires melted away all that remained of the Sith, there was a purifying fire in the hearts of all who knew the light and served the Force. It turned their sabers white, it inspired them to change their ways and focus all their efforts away from the politics, away from the pleasantries, and all towards these simple ideals. Peace. Justice and love. On that day, though the Sith faded away, it was the Jedi who rose from the ashes and were reborn. And now, young saplings, it is you who now has the responsibility to carry on the future of the Jedi, and to do it not for your masters, not even for yourselves, but for the Force who binds us all together. If this responsibility is your desire, be you sapling, apprentice, knight, or master, I bid you take up your weapon! For this I say to the galaxy, you have my sword! Dozens of Jedi took up their sabers, igniting them like glowing beams of powerfully bright neon into the night sky. All at once. The Jedi, in a singular, unified voice, cried out, You have my sword! The crowds gathered around the monastery, cried out and cheered at the incredible display. Go in peace, Jedi. May the Force be with you all. The Jedi shut off their sabers and dispersed. It took an hour or so for the monastery grounds to clear out. The night had fallen, and rising moons displayed their wonder to the red surface, now an elegant purple under the dark light. A dark figure leaps from seemingly nowhere and melts into the shadows of the monastery's upper levels. The shadow bent into the red and white corners of the marble corridor. The breathing of a Womprat would make an echo throughout the temple. Each movement must be precise, and the Phantom had never seen this floor before. An aqua green hand pulled the hood away, revealing Judah's determined face. Thanks for the lift, Rain. Stand by, Judah whispered into an earpiece. You got it. All right, Judah. Find the Grand Master. Judah closed his eyes. His presence is going to be hard to miss. Let's see. 
I can sense several beings still in the monastery, likely Sadana and his apprentice. Maybe a couple of centuries? And they're close. The Jedi Ronin explored the hallways, steadily going room to room. The presence of the Grand Master was growing. For any force sensitive, it would have been impossible to miss, like the sound of running water in a desert. It was only a matter of time before Judah found- Hello there. Judah nearly tripped. Standing in his blind spot was the brooding human figure he met eyes with back in the dojo. Judah never felt his presence. Even now, as Judah looked at the man, he could not read him. I, Judah began, but he decided the humble approach was the best course of action. Forgive me. My intentions were good, but my execution was dishonorable. The goddess. The man spoke simply. I I'm sorry? It's in the unknown regions, or the outermost regions as you now call it. The man tosses Judah a data disc. Baron Kuroda is my name. That disc contains the proper coordinates. Wait, I'm, I'm lost. Who are you? How do you know my reason for being here? Consider me a Jedi relic. A relic who's seen many souls, and yours is a common one. You seek guidance. You desire to be a knight much like most of the apprentices here, but you lack a necessary tool. Perspective. The goddess will provide you that. Judah is lost for words. All he could do was look at the disc. You best leave before Sedona notices your absence. I wish you all the luck, Judah Kimono. Baron walks away without another word. Judah decided it was best to heed Baron's words and make his escape. Ready for pickup, Rain? Loud and clear! The quantum rust shimmers into view just outside the monastery right as Judah leaps aboard. Without losing another second, the shuttle speeds off into the night. Baron enters the chambers of Master Sedona. The Grand Master somberly turns to face him. Is it done? We've bought ourselves time, but not likely enough. Then we must begin organizing. Immediately. And hope we're ready before it's too late.